Well, hello, and welcome back to Armor Mesh Laboratories, where first on the agenda is anatomy. Oh, pardon my attire. I've been told by some loved ones that I should take my social media accounts a little more seriously, so I decided to uh, professionalize it a little bit, so bear with me while I patronize them for a couple moments. Uh, first, top strings, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. You want to take one of each or touch one of each. So I start with a loop start, normally on the ends, and then two interlocks there, two interlocks splitting these two, two interlocks splitting those two, two interlocks there, another loop start on the end. Loop start. I'll go into a little more detail. If you all aren't familiar with it, but I just have one coming around attaching to the top sidewall hole. And then one big thing is the different holes, all right? They're not really diamonds. We can refer to them as uncut diamonds. So we have two types, all right? One is a track, one is an X. The track has two parallel track cords look like tracks. The other the other one is uh, a menagerie of chords and it kind of looks like an X. So with one side you will find a track and the exact opposite side you will find the X. If you cannot find the X it is the one that's right in between two tracks. When you get to the bottom string couple options. I prefer the weave. If you're looking at the pocket face down, I go in. Always take two, all right? So I'm going in, back out, two. And then to make it uniform, I go in and take four out and then back around for two. If you would prefer use the non-weave method and just come in and out, rock it out. We're working with two sides with the armor mesh, all right? You have the groovy side, or you have the added grip side. So with the grooved side, the groove side if it's on the ball they're acting almost like traditional leathers do to channel and funnel the ball to help with the trajectory on the grip side those are going more vertically up the pocket on the grip side it has the more horizontal cords going along with it so it's gripping the ball more of a horizontal fashion to help with maybe I mean, you're getting tons of hold either way but uh just personal preference if you want to do some power cradling if you want to do some faking if you want to do i mean you can get away with it with either side and they're both accurate so it's just personal preference so when i'm doing my interlocks on the side i am taking an taking a track or taking an X. All right, one thing with armor mesh is you can skip, all right? You can skip the mesh holes. So if I take a track here, I can, if I take a track here, I can skip an X and then take the next track and then take the next track. If you wanna skip one on each. Here's a, here's an example of I'll hit you with the Masvidal three piece. So here's an example where I just came down the whole entire way, skipping once. So I started on the second hole down and I took every sidewall hole, but I took every other mesh hole. 
the whole entire way down till about seven up. Yep, till about seven up. I skip one si sidewall hole and I jump two mesh holes. And again, I finish it off down there. So if you were gonna do more of an offensive pocket or midi attack, if it's if it's more pinched, you don't have to skip many of these mesh holes, but you can also skip a sidewall hole and two mesh holes, however you would like. For example, for a defensive pocket, so this thing's a monster, right? This thing is a monster bag, it's a monster head, so you have to work with some more material. So with this, I jumped a couple ones, but then I started jumping twos. I even jumped some threes as I got towards here where I really wanted the pocket to bag out. But if you have a little more of a pinched head and you have uh, a lot of sidewall holes, you don't really want to be jumping too many. Ones will be fine. Uh, so the last bit for anatomy, we have uh, the material. So the material for the spider wire and the Pegasus are a little different. They're woven a very similar way, just slight, slight variations. But the material itself with the spider wire, it is, uh, they're, they're both very strong. This is lighter, uh, both very light as well. This comes out to about 11 grams and this comes out to 21 grams. Uh, crazy light, still quite light. Uh, it's, they're both hydrophobic. I would like to say that actually water is afraid of the armor mesh, not necessarily the armor mesh is afraid of the water. Uh, it is crazy tensile strength, so strength to weight ratio, averaging 10 times greater than steel, if not more. Uh, this is a tensile strength of right around 300, and this is right around 400 pounds, so it's just really crazy strong. Uh, it doesn't really, I wouldn't say that it stretches, but I will say that when you you got to pound it in you know, pound it in your pocket string it up it is kind of impressive especially the pegasus with it being a woven material it i would analogize it to a shooting string so if you push in a shooting string it's a woven material so it's gonna enlarge so say your pegasus is first strong looking like that but when you pound it in it's gonna get taut all right so opposed to that it gets taut. So pound it in. Uh, once it is in that set taut spot, it's not going anywhere. No weather, no anything. No, you can catch a rocket and the thing's just going to stay as is. Uh, I think that... Anatomy's over for the day. On to physics. 